So how do you make sure something like this fits into something like this perfectly every single time without having to worry about any of the slicer settings? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to do that in a couple of different ways, but then finish off with designing some compliant mechanisms. So it's really important to make sure that your tolerances and clearances are all right when designing parts that fit together. And this can be really challenging because changing the color of a material will actually change how much it shrinks and how it fits together. It will also vary based on what your machine is, what your settings are, what your infill is, what your nozzle size is, what your resolution is. All of that will make things fit together differently. So the best way to get around this is to just design the parts to be really robust so that it does not matter what slicer, what printer, what material you're using, everything will just always fit together perfectly. Now, there's of course good design practices to follow. If you're designing a standard lid that's just gonna be pressed into another thing, make sure you're rounding all the edges, and of course chamfer the very first layer so that you don't have any elephant footing. And then everything will generally fit fairly true to what you have. But there are other things that you can do. This is a very simple kind of basic way of getting a design done, and it's not necessarily the right way of getting the design done. This has the problem of having a lot of touch on the outer walls. So if there's any deviation or anything else, you just have a lot of surface area to work against when trying to insert something together. One way of getting around this is to just remove the amount of surface contact on the outer edge of the part. This can be done simply by going around the outer side and just cutting out some holes and then it can go together much more easily because you don't have as much interference and you don't have the layer lines interlocking either. So you can make a tighter fit but still have it kind of loose. You can take this all the way down to like a single nubbin too so that it just shoves right in there and there's only a couple of points where it's making contact with the walls so it's easy to open back up. But if you want it to be permanent, go ahead and go with a solid version. But those are all solid versions. And solid versions aren't very useful because they don't change dimensions. They don't have a lot of flexibility or a lot of extra tolerance when pushing two things together. So let's go ahead and look at one of the most basic ways of having a universal lid. These are simple compliant mechanisms. They are side springs. Now, many people confuse 3D printing because they try to build these kind of springs vertical across the layer lines. But that's the wrong way to do it because if they're perpendicular to the layer lines, they can push out and snap along the layer lines right there. These are right in plane of the part. And this allows you to have as much flexibility as you could possibly want there while still having good rigidity. If you want them to be a tighter fit inside of the box, all you can do is just thicken up these outer sprues so you can have a really tight fit or a really loose nice fit. And of course you can put small nubs on them so that they can really interface with either a dot inside of the box or just press into the wall. And this way you get a really nice action, very easy fit, and you can have a really, really low tolerance part and not have to worry about it. So these compliant springs can be a really good way of having a part fit universally. But you can take it even further. Maybe you want a tighter fit, and the problem with these is that one of them can break off or you want some redundancy. A thing you can do there is grip fins. This means you just take that little flange and you take it all the way around and then you make the entire outer walls of this thing larger than this actual hole itself. These can be a great way to get a really nice tight fit, but still have enough compliance to where it's removable, as opposed to this thing to where you're just gonna pry it back out of there. This has just enough give to allow you to do something. And you can make these fins longer in order to make them a softer touch, or you can make them thicker and thinner. You can do all the things that you would do with springs in order to make these fit better. Now, of course, the trick to these is making sure that you actually do a cutout down along the bottom to make sure that they can actually flex freely. Generally, we recommend putting a 0.3 space between the bottom of the fin and the bottom of the part so that they can break loose and act just the way you want them to there. But 3D printing really has a superpower in that you can actually make true mechanisms inside of it. And this is something people don't really talk about and don't really very often understand. But while the grip fins are a really good, really universal and really robust way of doing it, sometimes you want even more action and more play and more flexibility. And the only way that comes is from the part being able to move a great distance. But you need a spring that can move a great distance and a fin going like this just isn't enough. Sometimes you wanna go from here all the way up to there. This is where these types of parts come in. So these parts are literally internal springs, internal latches that have been designed into this lid. Since 3D printing can make really thick parts without causing shrinkage the way like molding does, you can do all sorts of interesting things. These small latches are just the front end of it all, and then inside you have a spring that pushes the latch in and out. The trick to this 
is kind of tougher because you have to really mess with the design of it to make sure that it's robust. Otherwise you can have hang on the bridging above the latch that will cause it to jam inside of there. But when you have it, these latches are able to move much further than a grip fin ever can. They have almost two millimeters of distance that they can travel in order to create a latch. And if you tune them in, you can get a really nice fit all the way around. But you can also have detents inside of the box so that there's actually some place for those to go. You can give them little channels. These are a really good mechanism of making sure that the lid fits the bottom box every single time. And this is the kind of universal theme here, is that many people design parts in order to have the clearances and tolerances just so that they always fit together but it breaks so easily as you move from PETG to PLA or from white to black or from this machine to that machine. So it's much better if you can use all the powers of 3D printing to create latches and mechanisms and grip fins and all these other types of features. You can have parts fit together perfectly and always behave exactly the way you intend regardless of where or how they're made. And this is really useful if you're designing files for other people to print or if you're wanting to scale up production of your parts. So hopefully all these little tricks were useful to you. They are something that we use all the time and that we recommend people use inside of our Teleport app. Teleport is an app where you can actually upload files like this and have them printed and shipped directly to your customers for you. So again, it's really useful to design well because you wanna make sure they all come out reliably and consistently, and this is the best way of doing that with 3D printing. Have a great day, everybody.